Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to create three different pages and I'm playing with the new collection by Art by Marlene. I did play with this collection in a previous video, but I am going to make lots of products since you know that I absolutely love her style. So I am going to use images as my focal points from this DIY blog. That's where you just pop out all the images. And I'm also going to play with this rice paper. This is in black and white and it gives you lovely designs which are great for backgrounds. If you don't know how to start or how to break that blank page, then this is the way to go. Just use a rice paper and that's a technique that I'm going for for all the three pages today. There is also another part of rice paper where you will find lovely colorful designs, also great for backgrounds. However, for today, I'm going with a black and white one. For all the coloring today, I'm going with uh, acrylic paints. These are by Arba Marilla and I did uh, use them in a previous video as well. However, this time I'm going to do some organizing. So I have that uh, stand which is made out of MDF. It is super easy to put together and it helps you keep all those acrylic paints nice and neatly organized. All you do is uh, just pop out all the pieces. The way I did put it together was to use the back and then I just glued the side panel on one side and then if you notice you will find holes that look like a ladder. At the bottom ladder you need to add all those pieces with the smaller holes. At the top ladder you will add the ones with the larger ones. So that's how I did it. It's super easy to put together and I'm using white glue just to make sure that this is going to, to stay nice and uh, sturdy once I put everything together. Now I'm not waiting for the glue to dry. I need it to be quite wobbly and it is going to dry after I put all the pieces together and that's exactly what I want to do. So here I have uh, the other part, the top part in place and then all I need to do is to add uh, the front part and you see I need to be able to move some of the pieces for that piece to fit. That's why I'm not waiting for the glue to dry. It can dry now. So here is how it looks, lovely. You can also decorate it if you like. I'm going to leave it as it is. I kind of like that wooden feel and uh, I think it matches perfectly with my craft room. Maybe in the future I will add some um, uh, rice paper all around it or just use the acrylic paint to color it in and make it look more fun. Once you put everything together, you can move it easily around and you will find that it is very, very sturdy. So I'm super happy with my organizing today and let's start making pages. Lately I'm working on this art journal. This is from a previous release by Art by Marlene. The pages are 5 by 7 and uh, this is discontinued, I believe. I couldn't find it anywhere to link it for you. This paper is thick watercolor paper, so it takes mediums, sprays and water. Lovely, it's not going to warp at all. Plus, since it is so thick, it's not going to bleed at the back. If you want, you can make your own art journal. Just grab thick watercolor paper, cut it in a 5 by 7 if you want to recreate what I have. Use a punch to add the holes and use a ring biter to keep everything together. I get a lot of questions about this paper. Down below in the description area, I will link to watercolor paper, which is exactly the same as the one that I'm using. Now for today, since I'm uh, focusing on uh, sticking rice paper on your backgrounds and I'm going to create three layouts, I decided to go with three rice papers from this paper pad. I went with the one that has lots of dots, the one that has uh, uh, the alphabet on top and this one with some lovely writings. To stick the rice paper on top of my page, I'm going to use matte medium, so I'm just cutting that to size. I am applying a generous amount of matte medium with my brush and if you find that you end up with some wrinkles or some bubbles, it's not a big deal. Just look at it as a texture element which is going to enhance your background. In any case, matte medium is quite forgiving. You can see I can easily lift the paper and place it back on. Until I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to leave that aside to dry and then I will use my scissors to cut off the excess. 
So here I'm just repeating the same process until I end up with covering up completely all my three pages. And of course, once everything is dry, just use your scissors to cut off the excess. Another way to go would be to just tear it off. It is rice paper, so it's very thin and it's going to give a rough uh, edge, which is something that you may want for your pages. Also, another way to cut it off is to go all around the edges with a file. So let's work on the first layout. I decided to go with one of these girls as my focal point. There are always two pages that look identical, however, one of them has glitter on some of the elements, so you can pick whichever element you like, with glitter or without. I went with the girl that has glitter on her dress. Now, also notice that the girl doesn't have a white halo. There is a little outline, but it isn't white, so you can, if you don't like outlines, you can easily get away without doing any cleanup. Here I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup around the cloud. I'm going to leave the girl as it is, and I'm doing a little bit of cleanup of the outline around the um, wings. And this is definitely one of my go-to focal points when you don't know what to put on top of a page, just use a girl, give her some wings and you have a page ready to go. And now let's have some fun with color. I'm using acrylic paint, this is the, the one by Alba Marlene, and uh, I'm going with yellow and pink. The yellow color is called Happy, the pink one is called Ballet. I'm just randomly applying the color with my brush directly on top of the page. I'm working wet on wet, I'm not leaving the paint to dry, I'm just mixing the colors directly on top of my page. You will see that uh, the color at the top right corner looks more faded, that's because I applied white on top of that. And I'm diluting the paint a lot with water, this way I'm not covering up the background, all that design that I have from the rice paper is going to show just fine. If you want that to be covered up even more, don't use as much water. It is going to stay quite opaque and it's going to cover up most of the design. And since I have that white paint on my glass mat, I'm also going to add some uh, white splashes. If you are a beginner in art journaling or if you just want to create something quick and simple, then this size, the 5x7, is perfect because you don't have to spend that much time and also you don't have to cover up so much real estate as you would have if you were working on a double page spread. So now I'm using again that rice paper, but this time I'm working with a design that has more black in it, loads of uh, patterns, and I'm working with it as if it is uh, washi tape. So I'm just going to create a cluster where my girl is going to stand on top. Black and white stands lovely against the background, so I feel like this is going to work nicely for my page. And then uh, uh, the way I picked the colors for the background wasn't random. I made sure to stay away from green since uh, green is the dress of the girl. This way I'm helping her pop against the background even better. Now I'm just tucking the wings behind her body. And of course there are so many other techniques that you can do to enhance this page and make give it more interest and more visual texture. You can go with some stenciling of the background, you can use some pastes or even do some stamping. So for my composition I decided to stick that cloud on top of her head, but instead of rain I decided to have hearts coming down. This is the, how the design uh, looks like in the pad, however instead of popping out all those tiny little hearts and having to fight with those uh, little pieces, I decided to just grab my markers and draw the hearts directly on top of the page. And here are my markers to the rescue. Again, these are acrylic markers, which means that they are going to stay opaque on top of my page and at the same time they are permanent. You just shake them or um, press the nib a few times to get them started and uh, they are ready to go. I get a lot of questions about these markers as well. These are markers with different nibs. The brands that I like to work with are the Posca ones. This is a Posca, for example. Also, the PBO are very nice, as well as the Liquitex. I just have uh, different ones from different brands. They all work the same, as long as they are acrylic markers. 
Now, all I'm doing is using a white Posca pen to just create uh, for me a border all around. And then I will go with a brush and my white paint and uh, color it in. I also grabbed my white gel pen to add some highlights. Again, for these highlights, you can go with a white Posca pen if you like. I just like the super fine nib that I have on this gel pen. I'm also going to use a very fine tip uh, black marker and I'm going to give her a smile. She was looking kind of sad to me. Now I zoomed in, hopefully you can see that better. I decided to do an outline with white gel pen. I didn't like that, so I'm changing my mind. I'm going to do that with black. Just like every other element that I have on my page has some black lines all around, exactly that's the style that I'm going for with the hearts. And then with the white gel pen, I'm going to add a dot of white to make it look as if it is shiny. And I'm just going to fill in the border that I drew before with uh, white paint. You can do that with a white marker if you like. However, adding white over a colorful page is one of the most difficult things I find because it is so difficult to have that completely opaque. I don't mind if I see a little bit underneath. You can always leave it to dry and then make a second layer. I'm just happy with how it looks. I'm going to leave it as it is. Now I'm using a fine tip uh, marker and I'm going around that border to give it more definition. It's going to help it stand out even more, but always make sure that the white paint is completely dry, otherwise you are going to ruin the tip of this marker. And finally I'm going to grab my sticky quotes. This is from The Essentials collection by Studio Light and uh, I'm going to pick a couple of those phrases. I decided to go with the um, word breathe and then find your inner peace. I usually cut them apart and uh, I just stick them randomly on top of my page. I always grab a pen and outline them and I'm going to call this page done. Here are some close-up photos on this page and I know this is going to be a huge video since I have two more pages to show you. But I feel like these are quite small so I can always fit more pages in one video. Hope that is making it more fun for you. So for this page again I'm grabbing my acrylic paints and I will go over the rice paper. This time I'm going for a background which is quite dark and it looks like space. That's why I picked purples, blues and black. And all I'm doing is working directly on the page. You can see that I do blend the colors there. I am being super messy here and it looks like I know what I'm doing, but really this is going to end up super ugly. I will not like it at all. However, the good thing about working with acrylic paints is that you can let them dry and then apply on top a second layer or a third layer, etc. So this way you can save whatever you have underneath. So at this point, don't look at it as an ugly background, just look at it as a first layer. One of the bonuses of these acrylic paints that come in that uh, fine tip little bottle is that you don't waste paint at all. You see I add just a dot to work with it and just go back and add even more if I need to. I feel like I'm uh, very frugal with this paint and it's going to last me forever. And here is the first ugly layer. Let's dry it out and move on and do some more layers on top to make it look nice. Here I'm covering it up completely with azure, a lovely blue color. With a baby wipe I'm going over it before it dries so that I can wipe off some parts and make it look more interesting by letting some of the layers underneath to show through. And I'm determined at this stage not to throw this background away, I'm going to save it any way I can. So again I'm going with more layers of paint over it, always making sure that I kind of dilute it. I don't want this to go completely opaque and lose that text that I have from the rice paper at the background. I still want that to be there since it's going to give some visual texture. So now let's do some inking on the edges. I always like to frame my pages somehow and I think in this case it's going to help that ugly background to look better. 
I'm doing that with black archival ink which is going to stand nicely on top of acrylic paint and it's going to stay permanent. And of course there is nothing you cannot fix with splashes so I'm just going to throw some white splashes over there and I think it looks just fine. The fun thing about backgrounds I find is that we do pay too much attention on them when we are creating them but at the end of the day when you stick the focal points on top of your quad you don't really see them and even if they are ugly as long as the focal point stands out against that background it's going to be just fine and this is exactly the case with this page. So here for my focal point I decided to go with this really fun flamingo in the spaceship, I always find that Art by Marlene designs are so unique and fun. I am also adding some little dots, like, uh, they look like bubbles, and I just pop those out from that uh, pad again. Everything is from this pad. And again, I'm using my white gel pen, I'm adding my highlights. I'm not paying attention on where the light source is, I'm just adding highlights here and there. I find that they give a whimsical look on the cutouts and it helps those elements uh, stand out even more. If you have a stencil with stars you can go ahead and add some stars here with uh, ink or even with paste it would uh, go nicely. However I'm going with very simple steps for today's layout since I want to keep this video perfect for beginners. Basically if you are a beginner and you do have acrylic paints you can do something similar all you need is that booklet full of ready-made focal points and if you don't have the rice paper you can always use book pages for your background. Now in the sticky quotes booklet you will find also borders, I'm going to use one of them just to add some interest. I'm going to cut it in half so that I can use it in two different areas and you can see they are quite forgiving, you can easily peel them off and stick them back in and as my quote I decided to go with the unknown can be a magical destination. I'm going to do my outline just like always and here are some close-up photos on the second layout for today. And then for the last page with the alphabet I decided to go with the robots, I think that they are a perfect match. And I'm not going to cover up the background with acrylic paint this time, just to show you that you can leave rice paper as it is. I'm going to enhance it in a bit, but you will see how easy it's going to be. So to help those um, robots stand out and to give, to give them kind of a ground to go on top of my page, I decided to use this uh, rice paper from the colorful pad. I'm going to use this lovely page and uh, I'm just going to draw circles. I'm going to need three of them in different sizes, one for each of the robots. I'm just uh, using those uh, circle dies to draw around them. I'm not going to use the circle dies however to cut out perfect circles. I just want to have a guide to cut them out with my scissors. Now all the circles are different sizes to make them look more interesting and I did use different parts of that rice paper so they will end up looking quite different. I, I'm cutting out now the circles making sure that they are not perfect. I'm cutting inside of the line so it's not going to show at all and I have a perfectly imperfect circle there. I will repeat the same process with all of them. Now I'm going to stick those circles down on my page. For that of course you can use your matte medium, I'm just going quickly with my white glue. I also like to have elements overlapping or having elements going outside of the page, I find that it adds more interest on a composition. And I'm using my scissors to make sure that everything is nice and clean by cutting off the excess. I also grabbed a black marker and I draw some uh, imperfect lines all around those circles. Somehow my camera stopped working while I was doing that, but probably you can see here that I just went uh, completely randomly around the circle again and again, drawing many imperfect circles there. Now I'm going all around my cutouts and uh, use a black marker to get rid of that white 
edge. You don't really need to do that. It's just something that I like to do with all the cutouts. I just don't show it all the time on the video. So now I have one circle for every one of my robots and I'm going to stick them on top, making sure that they are not centered, just to make it look more interesting. Now I'm grabbing my blue acrylic paint and I'm going to do a wash on one side of the page just to frame it somehow to make it look more interesting. Notice how diluted it is, I don't want to add too much color back there. And uh, I also did some splashes, you will see the splatters on the close-up photos, it's all over the background with pink, yellow and blue. And of course it's time for the white gel pen to do its job, again adding some highlights. I'm also going around the circles to add some uh, white highlights there and uh, some doodling. And the truth is that since I'm working on a 5x7 page, if you are a card maker and you just watch this video for fun, you can easily shrink it down and turn it into a card. And of course, if you love art journaling in a book, you can easily have these three ideas today as a starting point and adapt it on a two-page layout. So for this page, I went with the quote that says, you may be too much for some people. Don't worry, not all people can be your people. Again, I'm going to outline the quotes, but this time with white gel pen. And you can see here how easy it is to peel them off and replace them if you feel like you didn't like the placement. They are really forgiving these stickers. So finally, I'm going to zoom in for you. Probably you can see better all the splashes that I have on the background. They are all colorful. I'm going to finish it off by drawing some lines on a couple of corners. Nothing has to be perfect here. I'm just uh, creating kind of a border. And that's just because I don't know when to stop with little details. So that finishes all my three pages for today. I had lots of fun playing with all those techniques, with rice paper, with the die cuts. I absolutely love how this art journal is coming together. Already lots of pages inside and every one of them is here on YouTube as a tutorial. So here are some close-up photos of the three projects that I made for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired and if so, don't forget to click the like button, it really helps. In the description area, just like always, you will find links to everything I used. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.